we're on. And so tonight we're going to do something different uh, and yet the same. We're going to be talking about where to find gold in, of all places, Puerto Rico. So we're going to be looking at the island of Puerto Rico and we're going to talk about kind of some business with the geology in the Caribbean. And this holds true of many places that are kind of ring of fire. So this would be true of Indonesia. That would be true of, of a lot of a lot of the islands in the Atlantic that have this this characteristic of containing gold ores. And so we're going to talk about that again. I'm going to go after gold and copper because it's illustrative of what we've been discussing. And that is just because you don't find a lot of records of one thing doesn't mean another won't lead you to it. And so again, uh, copper is a really good leading indicator in this case, and I'll show you why. So let's zoom in. Uh, let's check to make sure everybody's okay. We got audio, check, check. I'm gonna assume we do, but let me get onto the page and I can listen for myself because I don't trust Murphy. So let's see, where, where are we? We got uh, everybody's having a good time tonight. Sorry about being an uh, hour late. Yeah, right at an hour. Yep, yep, we've got you. Okay, so we're live and we're commenting. Let's see what we've got in the way of comments. Uh, hey, Josh is there. Justin, hey, Justin. CJ's on. Sound is good. Okay, good. And we got uh, Bob Sheasley. Audio and video are good. So we're going to go for it. Uh, let me turn the audio down here. And I will just keep an eye on your comments as we go along. So tonight, like I said, we're going to go into Puerto Rico. So let's go over to the full image and take a look closer. Uh, San Juan up in here. Down in this region through here is what took the big hit on that hurricane that came through and just pretty much clobbered all of Puerto Rico, but really especially down in this region. And so uh, even there, you can see places where there were gold gold finds. Um, but pretty much the whole island has a lot of gold prospects and copper. Um, I've marked the copper as a kind of a brownish orange, uh, just to kind of make it different. Um, and then I marked the gold with our traditional gold. So uh, let's zoom in a bit. So we can see down here... Um, Ponce, I, I can't quite pronounce that. I'm just going to take a wild guess at it. But you can see some prospects right up here. A name 48-1. Imahu, Imahuel, I can't, copper mag, magnesium. I'm sorry, copper manganese. Yeah. Um, interesting, this one is calcopyrites. So why wouldn't there be gold in that well it depends we talked about this a while back that you know sometimes you'll find with calcopyrites it's a solution solid solution kind of crystal and so what ends up happening is gold can can introduce itself in there as in this case manganese can introduce itself in there as copper and so forth along with the sulfur and so you get this mixture the solution that can vary all over the map as to the concentrations in this case the major commodities being uh, return manganese and copper. So it's kind of interesting in the day and age of manganese being used for batteries. That's the kind of thing you want to keep your eyes open for is, you know, again, rare earths or technological things may have more value in the long haul than gold. Uh, this one over here is uh, polymetallic veins. So it's an unknown uh, or a load probably. It says it's unknown, but when they say polymetallic veins they mean it's underground or it's in crystalline material on the surface but uh, but copper is the main commodity coming out of that one so that's that's it for this area let's go on up here where we see some gold um, here's one's kind of interesting this one has got a little of each so it's got some copper and it's got some gold so when we look at the gold we see calcopyrite galena gold siderite silver sphalerite in polymetallic veins. So it comes out as commodity number one is a mixture of gold, silver, lead, copper, and zinc. There's our friends, the association. So they hang out together. They're found here. And the reason is secondary hydrothermal activity because this island is a volcano. It's hot. So guess what ends up happening is you have these, these intrusive bodies buried underneath these things. 
there is a, a huge amount of volcanic, or not volcanic, but earthquake activity up in this region up in here. Uh, and so what ends up happening is it's, it's sort of indicative of a potential magma movement in the area. <clears throat> but these islands basically have magma intruded into them and up through them, venting of hydrothermal deposits and pulling of mafic, uh, magma that's metallic rich material into the surface. And so it all shows up on the island itself, which is kind of cool. Um, prospecting on an island like this, you know, you, you definitely want to be aware of you know what the actual requirements are the laws and who owns and who has claims and all that stuff here you go calcopyrite sphalerite uh, polymetallic copper zinc gold back to that thing again <clears throat> uh, an occurrence of calcopyrite cuprite gold so a lot of what we're seeing here and it goes with the volcanic activity are sulfides and so uh, you know sulfides are one means of depositing another means would be the metallic you know element itself depositing out in a quartz vein uh, this is likely to be kind of a mixture a melange of quartz and or other hydrothermally deposited material that's heavy in sulfides and so therefore it comes out as pyrites and calcopyrites and copper ores and all that kind of stuff uh, but you can see the kind of relationship between the gold and the copper you know uh, here we've got all this all this copper flying all throughout here and it's kind of interesting that, to look. Let's see if we can spot. Um, so there's San Sebastian. Sometimes you can pull up pictures and things like that. They give you kind of a feel in <laughs> a boutique. No, I don't think so. So anyhow, I just thought I'd poke into Puerto Rico for a moment and show you a little bit of what it's like off the coast. Many of these are both, you know, dual use mines. They have gold coming out and they have copper coming out. And what I did is pull the two commodities and then superimpose them onto the same plot. And that just gives you the ability to see what's happening. Uh, and so that's kind of it for tonight. I just wanted to touch bases real quickly and give you another gold in episode. Uh, shame on you exploiting Puerto Rico like that. You guys steal everything. Stay away. Well, I don't agree with that statement but that's okay um, when i'm talking about what's in puerto rico it's like any other place there's access rights and there are people in puerto rico who like to go prospecting and that's perfect it's also a point of tourism to go into places and look at geology and things like that so it's not the same thing and i'm sorry you're offended but the fact of the matter is i'm not and you shouldn't be either uh, geology is an amazing thing and it's international, knows no bounds, knows no races. The beauty of it is the strength in which we can all come together for the need and the values that are there to build up our, our you know, valuable commercial engagement. To claim everything's an exploit is uh, to miss the point. You know, if you really, really want to hold to that, then everybody who claims that better stop driving a car because you're exploiting the oil coming out of the ground probably from places you don't even know where it comes from because it's all mixed up. And that's the nature of our international global economy. It's a good thing. There are aspects of it that are not good things, but I won't get into that, the politics of it. But the fact of the matter is that gold, copper, silver, jewelry, uh, technology, transportation industry uh, even religious artifacts all hinge off of mining and so you run into this conundrum that people take offense because you're somehow looking at a mineral resource that has value and 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 people want to hoard it the fact of the matter is you know I'm not into hoarding and I'm not into exploiting I'm into understanding wisdom and knowledge gives purpose and it gives you strength in understanding how to deal with people who don't understand what you're about when you're prospecting for gold or any other commodity. The fact of the matter is it's no different than ranching or fishing or even harvesting vegetables for vegans. It doesn't matter. It all depends on cooperation together and the willingness to trade amongst one another. I don't agree with 
governments taking control of commodities or people taking control of commodities either because that is exploitation. But that is not what we're doing here tonight by any means. We are simply talking about the existence of documents in this USGS map thing, which you can see in the GGM thing down below. <laughs> Poke. And you can learn about how to make these maps yourself, even if you live in Puerto Rico, which, by the way, I have got dozens of people who've asked me for just that because they want to go find gold in Puerto Rico and they know that they can't go in certain prospects because they're already claimed. But guess what? Downhill, downstream, if it's not claimed, it may have gold. That's how this works. And if you understand the principles I teach, I'm showing you how to start and then where you want to go next. And that's kind of the thing you want to do here. No offense, no offense taken.